Good morning, Church Pastor George here. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today to Ministries by PG this Saturday morning. We're on today's show. We're talking about realities and how with God, it could just be your destiny. Thank you and God bless. Good morning, boys and girls. Pastor George here. Can you guess where the lesson brought us to today? Yep, you guessed it. School. I wonder why the lesson brought us here. Hmm, but before we find out, let's have a word of prayer. You can pray along with me with the words at the bottom. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for today because you are God in every way. Please be with my friends and family, and forgive me if I do not see the world as you see. Please help us to laugh together as sisters and brothers, and in all we do, and in all we say, please be with us through the day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Alright guys, the coast is clear. Now, as we were fighting, I realized maybe because I stood up for myself, he might not pick on me anymore. But it also reminded me of a verse Jesus said in John chapter 15. In verse 19, he says that, If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own, as it is. You do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. You know, the Bible says that Jesus died for everybody out of love, John 3, 16. And I didn't show any love to my bully. He didn't punch his bully in the nose, but I did. And while I felt good, I still felt guilty. You know, 
it hit me. Not everyone might like me because I tell the truth or because I'm kind or because I'm loving or because I stick up for what's right. And I do things different, such as pray before I eat, before any test or before anything. I know Jesus, when he did everything he could for the whole world, the world didn't like him either. You know, Jesus said that we should pray for our enemies, pray for those who bother us and get on our nerves. I didn't do that. I haven't prayed for him. I didn't show him any kindness. I didn't share anything with him, any of my food, anything like that. I never helped him with any of his classes. I just didn't talk to him. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to give Jesus this way a try. You never know. Maybe God let me punch him in the nose so I can get it through my thick skull. That fighting sometimes isn't the answer. And we can always show love to everyone. Because God does it for us. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I might do that. Hmm. Who knew sleeping can help? And you know, you might have somebody in life who's bothering you, who might get on your nerves, or might frustrate you or make you mad. Pray for them. You never know what they're going through behind closed doors. Show kindness, show love, and grace and mercy. You know, the Bible says, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Because you never know what they're going through. You could just make the difference. Because to God, you do. But I gotta go. Thanks for the talk. I gotta get back to work. It's a pretty big auditorium. Thanks again. You can pray along with me with the words at the bottom. Dear Jesus, you are good and wise. I will praise you when I rise. Hear this prayer I send. Please bless my family and please bless my friends. Help my eyes to see all the good you send to me. Help my ears to hear calls for help from far and near. Help my feet to go in the way that you will show. Help my hands to do all things loving, kind, and true. And Jesus, guard me through this day and in all I do and in all I say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. your boy DJ PG in the building, you feel me? I, uh, <laughs> you know, on MPG, we like to be intentional, relational, and very conversational with the gospel, but today, today I'm feeling a little lyrical, you heard me? So if you would indulge me and let me say what I have to say, you heard? <clears throat> Yo, this right here is MPG, I am the P and the G, I'm rapping with transparency with all of me and God you see, yeah. if I went to sleep and did not wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take these words we say in bed, cause where we lay, we next to dick, yeah. most these rappers still forgot my name, name. cause I'm here to entertain, pain. all my raps come from my pain, pain. since I am ordained, I abstain to complain or explain my just ain't on a past pain, which remains from a certain spring, I ain't changed or detained, could regain my domain, God on my side, side, see with him I do or die, die, cause my G-O OD, he did the same for me. His love is what sets me free. Free, free, one, the Trinity. Dosen is fatality and stops my morality. That ain't my capacity. One will God. Watch you see, you feel me? Once used to pacifist, but now I'm a pacifist. Don't hate the game, nor do I this. My love for God is my premise. If you can see, then that's a miss. And I'ma tell you just like this that I, I am not the one who should be messed with. with. Cause on me is my smooth Stacey Adams fit, fit And that I Ayo, will GTR Ooh, What happened? You, you got, got someone behind you. you Behind me, where? Behind you, look Oh, yes, yes, yes Alright, clear the booth, alright Thank you, clear the booth And you guys go inside And I'll see you guys in there Thank you And uh, load the music down for me, alright Appreciate it Cool Appreciate it Alright, what's up? I'm GTR Stands for George the Rapper It's weird how PG and I have the same name Anyway, he asked me to talk to you today. You can call me Jitter for sure. That's what my friends call me. Good to see you. Oh. PG asked me to talk to y'all today on some advice to give you guys. And uh, I'm happy to oblige. So uh, PG's a cool dude. You get to know him. I think later on, a couple minutes or so, 
You know, when PG started this whole ministry thing, he, uh, he was pretty nervous about it. He may not put up a front, but he was pretty nervous. He didn't speak like everybody. He didn't talk like everybody. He wasn't smart like everybody. So he just really was trying to do the best he could. I told him something that was important. Whenever you're protecting your vision and whatever you want to do in life, you never got to stop what God put in you. You never have to compromise to be recognized. I promise you, that's not the way to go. That's the same thing I want to share with you all today. You know, you probably have a vision, a perspective, a place, a person, a mind, an environment, a community, whatever it is on your heart. Not everybody sees it the way you do. You don't got to bend so nobody can pick you up. You stand straight up. You keep your head up. There's much in you. God got you. You hold on to him. Because much is required, much is given. And there's much in you. Greater is he that is in me than one in the world. First John 4.4. 4. That's what being created means, right? There's nobody who can produce more than you have in which you've been given in this life you've lived. Because ain't nobody else like you. You're unique. You ain't mediocre. Don't nobody tell you different. I'm happy PG asked me to talk to y'all. Because I had to remind myself that too. Man, especially in this rap game, everybody want to speak the same thing. I'm trying to speak about love and God. So I do it my own way. So what if nobody sees you? So what if money don't come in that fast? When PG first started his whole ministry thing, it was four people he would text every day. That was, what, six years ago, seven years ago? But the small he had, he was faithful with it. And now by God's grace, he's producing television shows and hopefully movies someday. In the words of the fictional character Medea, produced by Tyler Perry, ain't what they say about you. It's what your answer to. Hi, Pastor George here. You're probably wondering what's going on. I'd like to share with you that Ministries by PG is broke. We have no money. We're viewer funded, which means that all our success truly does come from the viewers. All our finances, if, they're very, if there were ever any, too comes from the viewers. Ministries by PG receives no money or gets paid for no production. We're simply just messengers of the gospel. And for that, we are thankful. The reference from the fictional character Medea produced by Tyler Perry, we at MPG use to shed light on the topic at hand. We acknowledge all he has done for up and coming artists, for his African American communities, and so much more globally. I simply want to reiterate that Ministries of PG is broke. We have no money. I, have, I don't get paid for this. It's an opportunity to grow the ministry. And for that, I am thankful. Please. We're just messengers. We're simply just transferring the message through MPG back out to the world. Thank you. God bless. Like I was saying, dance, sing, act, do what you gotta do. You keep working hard, you keep pushing at it. Don't you give up, don't you bend down. God got you, you pick your head up, all right? Somebody put you down like that. If you got a journey, a goal, a mindset, a perspective in mind, you keep that, all right? Just because somebody else don't got it don't mean yours don't mean nothing. To God, it means everything. So you keep pushing. Don't nobody push you down. You may not be a pastor, but you may have your own ministry. You may have your own thing of how you worship God. You may have your own creative aspect. You don't got to bend that for nobody. God put that in you. It's up to you to show the whole world that God is still on the throne by your perspective. So, you keep a good head on your shoulders. You stay prayed up. Be Christ-centered. God is faithful. You've never not been. Don't give in. Don't give up. God got you, I promise. You keep your head up, all right? And we'll talk. I'll see you soon. I'll get back to my rap. Remember, God loves you, and I do too. All right, y'all. I welcome and thank you so much for not only supporting the ministry, but becoming part of the MPG family. Again, it is a privilege and honor to be speaking to you in such a grand arena moment on TV. It's a privilege and an honor, it really is. As you know by now, one of the meanings in PG, in MPG, stands for the ratings, meaning that MPG likes to cater to all ages. The rest of the shows this entire season will have children's church, faith-based counseling, an intercessory prayer, and an intentional conversation. Ministries like PG is viewer funded, which means without viewers and supporters like you, the possibility for the gospel to reach the whole world would be extremely difficult. All our success comes from you, the viewers and supporters. If you wish to support ministry, if the Lord has sees fit in your heart to do so, you can do so in three ways. Four, actually. I'm getting old, Lord. Huh? Uh, five? Five, sorry. One, by telling everybody. Everybody you know about ministries like PG. 
your friends, your family, your cousins, everybody. And if you wish to do so financially, here are the other three. <clears throat> Cash App, Zelle, Venmo. Or you can send it to Ministries by PG, PO Box 56953, Jacksonville, Florida, 32241. Before we go back to the second half of the show, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this moment, this opportunity, Lord, where we can say thank you for your goodness and mercy in our life, Lord. We thank you for the testimonies, for showing up, Lord, and showing out your goodness and mercy, Lord, your glory, Father. It is a privilege and an honor. Lord, I want to say thank you so much for the viewers and supporters of Ministries by PG, Lord. Lord, this show is not only for me, Father. It's theirs. It's yours, Lord. Lord, times are not easy right now, Father. But I want to say a special prayer, Lord. A prayer benediction for those who, despite things, Lord, despite hard coming, still want to extend the reach of the ministry. Father, bless them in a mighty way, Lord. You said your word will go out and not come back unto you void. Father, I know that this message, Lord, is reaching somebody, touching them spiritually, Father. As you are their shepherd, Father, guide us and lead us to be Christ-like individuals as you created us to be. Until your son return, we say thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you and enjoy the show. This is the intercessory prayer moment of the show where right now you can bring your request, your desires, your needs to the altar, to the Father's throne where he will acknowledge them. Right now, this is a moment where we can come to God with our secrets, with our hopes. Would you do so with me? And let's go to the Father's throne. Dear Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. For your goodness and for your mercy, for your kindness, Father. Lord, I thank you that there is someone here today watching the show, Lord. That you are with them, guiding them spiritually, guiding their life, holding them in your goodness and mercy, Father. Lord, right now we are praying at the intercessory prayer, Lord. Interceding to our intercessor, Jesus Christ, who we are in need of, Lord. This prayer emphasizes on the fact of suffering, which each individual who has lived on earth experiences, Lord. Lord, I am requesting your ear right now for an individual today. Lord, there has been torment for someone spiritually, physically, emotionally, academically, financially. Right now, we might be requesting a way out of our situation. But I'm also asking that you step into our situation. Open doors for us, Lord. Bestow upon us a peace that surpasses all understanding. And that peace is Jesus Christ. Give to us a perspective that does not rely upon our eyes, but upon the perspective of your eternal sight. I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke frustration. I rebuke fear. I rebuke heartache. I rebuke disappointment. I rebuke the things that may cause us to lose sight of your son, Jesus Christ. The perspective of hope. Be with the individual right now listening to this prayer. Hold them in your hand. Comfort them. Lord, and what they may be going through right now. The Bible says that Jesus learned obedience through suffering. And if the world hated Jesus so much that it would also hate us, let us be reminded that you are a loving father holding your children 
and that we know we are not alone, that if we can call upon your name, we still have a fighting chance. Open doors for us, Lord. Break barriers for us, Lord. Add healing to our society, Lord, to our emotional state, to our physical state, to our spiritual state, Lord. Let healing come to where healing needs to be. May each individual here right now be blessed. Be freed. Be encouraged. Be reminded. Be loved. And be held by your faithfulness to them. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for today, for this moment, this opportunity, so that we can come together and say thank you for your goodness in our life. May this moment we are sharing right now with you, Holy Spirit, have a transformation of power to the individuals watching today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, this is the intentional part of the show, where we come together and give a godly perspective, conversational perspective of the gospel and today we're talking about reality you know when i was first starting this ministry walk like gtr said i was nervous and um i'm not like the most educational minister but you know i know a couple things here and there i know a couple things but um what always intrigued me was the character of an individual which i believe is one of the most important things in the christian walk is the character is how one responds to god and to heartaches in life how one might with knowing that God calls upon you and sometimes how this world who is against God might not like you per se. With that idea in mind, I want to bring to you a story. We're starting in Genesis chapter 22 with Abraham. For those of you who may not know, Abraham was one of our forefathers. Oh, well, a biblical forefather who came to know God in an interesting way. Abraham is a character I constantly use throughout my life who I continuously try to imagine the faith he had in God. For those of you who don't know, Abraham is one of the most important parts in the Bible. He alone exercises a faith in God and a trust in God that is what I believe to be unmatched. By not knowing so much about God, by not knowing so much about God, he continues to deepen his relationship with God, with trust and with faith. And by doing so, God rewards him with God's faithfulness to him in his life. Not just his life, but his wife, Sarah, and his son, Isaac. And to us, his latter generation. But there was one task God asked Abraham, and that was to sacrifice Isaac. You know, as us ministers, or as us Christians, we always hear the story of Abraham having that test of faith in God by going to sacrifice Isaac. And for those of you who don't know, it's, it's a pretty important story in the Bible, of the test of faith. If you ever get a chance to read it, please do so. Genesis chapter 22. We always seem to overlook this story. Oh, no, he... Sacrifice Isaac. Yeah, God asked him to sacrifice Isaac. But that's a pretty big thing. So with that in mind, I'd like to bring to you a conversation I had back at seminary. But I'm in the class, and my professor asked me, he said, George, where, not just me, the entire class, would you all die for God? Now, we're all ministers, so everyone's like, yeah, I do it. In my heart, I'm like, bro, I D.I.E. for G.O.D., you feel me? I do this. God, God, God. But of course, out loud, I responded, well, professor, I would. I would, right? He's, he's like, okay, so you guys, all of you would die. We're like, yeah, we would die. We'd die for God. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's God. And he asked us, would you suffer for God? Yeah. I mean, isn't dying worse than suffering? So yeah, we do it. And he's like, okay. So he painted us a picture. And so, which is what I'm going to do for you all today, is paint you a picture. If you would indulge me, it's going to get kind of like, oh my gosh, who is this minister? But just bear with me because there's a point to get across. Before I continue the story, imagine someone who you love with all your heart. By the sight of them, even the thought of them, changes your demeanor. And you do all this because you have that agape love for them. I mean, that individual, that person, whoever it is, when you think about them, when you see them, it changes your perspective. And I'll give you an example. For me, I have a couple nephews, and you guys seen them on the trailer. And for those who follow me on Ministries by PG on Instagram, and I love them with all my heart. I love them, right? 
Of course, I don't condone fighting. If one of them were to push the other, I would say, guys, come on now, why would you? Love is a principle we share, right? But now, if I'm picking one from school and someone desires to push him to the ground and he starts to bleed or something like that, um, are you buster? <laughs> what you trying to do here, son? You, you want this? Of course, I do not condone nor fighting. So imagine a person like that in your head. If God asked you to take them away out of your life, could you do it for God? Abraham had to live in a reality where he might not win, but he did it for God. God was all he had and God was his everything. Abraham desired to live in a reality where he said, Lord, even if I don't win on earth, I know good and well that in heaven, <clears throat> that'd be a whole different ball game. You know, they don't, there's not many Christians like that now who would give up an entirety for God. In Genesis chapter 22, we find Abraham requested by God to do a act that required a lot of faith, a lot of strength, and a lot of discipline. Right now, you might have to live in a reality where God is requiring you to do a lot, where God might be requesting you either to be still, to remain in your situation, to have a faith that might exercise dominance to overcome your situation. I want to encourage you that this reality you might be living in is a place where I promise God can exercise his full control in the matter. Where God can uplift you and show his glory through you. If you can give him that. God is faithful and he has never failed. He is on time. And he is listening and vouching for you. Genuinely acknowledge him. I promise you there is someone listening to you holding you you're not alone in your situation I may not know the answer why bad things happen to good people but what I do know that is God is faithful and he will never leave his children because he don't play about his he sure don't as much as I would snap for my nephews imagine what God would do for me and for you there is like I said before a labor in the vineyard who is interceding and working for you with you please be encouraged that what you're going through you're not by yourself there is someone listening there is a labor in the vineyard he's listening to you and he loves you very much tune in next week to the next episode of ministries by pg thank you and god bless